sampling from Canada to the Philippines. So, so there's diff different areas that you can travel from obviously Canada, but I'm Canada, but I'm leaving from Toronto. So I living there in the Philippines, guys. Is I pay the tax. You're jumping way ahead, though. Oh, tax, ba? You're talking. You're tux. jumping way ahead. Oh, okay. We're not even there yet. That's where we were ending it, and yours died. Okay, so we got to start over on this one. So let's start over, guys. So a few years back, yeah. when I flew to the Philippines for the first time, uh, not being experienced in regards of the flights. I was looking at, uh, you know, the price, you know, because the prices had jumped up quite a bit after the pandemic. Before the pandemic, guys, a return flight to the Philippines, on the average, direct flight, 900 Canadian dollars. After the pandemic, over $2,000, guys. Wow, it doesn't make any sense, but whatever. So... I was looking at trying to save some money on the flight and I made the biggest mistake by not flying direct. I went to the States, getting into uh, San Francisco airport, what a nightmare airport. I would never go back to the airport again. The people weren't helpful, you had to get off and you're just blind, there's no one there and you had to go far guys far and then take a train to get to the other terminal and nobody there to help you just terrible i had to go through two different customs it made no sense going through two different customs i've already gone through customs guys i shouldn't have to go through customs again but because the way that it was all set up it's just horrid guys so i wouldn't recommend flying to the u.s if you're in canada avoid it it's a nightmare and the worst thing is is that you can mix miss your next flight because when going through customs there, for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, but it seems to be that those those custom guys there uh, don't like Canadians for whatever reason. Put me in another room to wait for no reason, guys. I was in there for two hours for no reason. Kept asking me, where's your uh, check-in bags? Like, guys, I have no check-in bags, I only carry-on. It was just stupid, guys. They were annoying. And you can't get annoyed with them. You just gotta be very, you know, at ease, you know, but they were just PRs, guys. So avoid going to the States if you're going to go to the Philippines. Pay the extra money. I would recommend direct flight. I know a lot of people complain about the Philippine Airlines. I've now flown it a lot, and I haven't had any issues. So for that flight there was over 30 hours. When I got to the Philippines and I got off of that plane... Oh my God, guys, the humidity just hit me from the exhaustion of the flying and the anxiety of possibly missing my flight. You know, if anyone's flown, you know there's anxiety if you're, you got to get a connecting flight, especially if you're going and jumping into the States and you're going into airports and, you know, you're running into lineups and that. Even though I had lots of time, that time does dwindle quickly, guys. So that flight there... For a return, it was either $22 or $2,500 it cost me. Fast forward. Coming back to Canada on a one-way for both of us, and this is the first time for Bella to leave the Philippines, that cost us for a direct flight $5,500. Now there's more to the $5,500 because we had to get, we're leaving from Dumaguete, so we had to pay to get to Manila from Dumaguete. And we made sure we got there early in the morning. And then we took our flight uh, from Manila to Toronto later in the afternoon, four o'clock ish. So I always recommend if you, with the type of flight like that, because if you're getting into the Philippines, you're getting to Manila, you're going to be going somewhere else, make sure you leave yourself lots of time, guys, so you're not stressed out. I think we got in at 11 or 12 o'clock, and our flight left at 5 o'clock. So it gave us four to five hours if there's any issues, because you got to go through.